A YouTuber named Iman Ghazi popularized the concept of monk mode. He often talked about how he uses the monk mode to focus on achieving specific goals within a particular time frame. In one of his videos, Iman Ghazi said that when he's in monk mode, he doesn't drink alcohol, restricts his social media usage, exercises for 30 minutes, and he also focuses on being productive in his business during this time. In as much as Iman Ghazi and the other YouTubers that create content on monk mode mean well, their videos are doing more harm than good. Their videos are always missing key details about the monk mode. And that's why when the majority of you guys follow their advice and go on monk mode, not only do you fall off midway and fail to achieve your goals, but you might also notice that you're far worse productivity-wise than you were before you started the challenge. You might even find that after the monk mode period, the rate at which you consume time wasters has increased multiple folds. But this video you're about to watch isn't your regular generic monk mode video that's littered YouTube nowadays. This video goes deeper into the details that your favorite YouTubers don't talk about when it comes to the concept of monk mode. Watching this video till the end will help you to finally understand why the monk mode might never work for you no matter how many times you try to do it. And because I'm the kind of guy that doesn't like stating the apparent problem without proposing an adequate solution, I'll end this video with the correct way you can go about the monk mode if you ever want to do it. But before we get into all that, let's build a solid foundation by understanding where the problem most guys face when they're doing monk mode comes from. And we can trace the source of this problem by looking at where the concept of monk mode originated in the first place. You should know that this mainstream version of the monk mode is relatively new. I first heard about the monk mode 11 years ago on the NoFap forums. Guys were loosely using the term to describe a mode of NoFap that's pretty hardcore. Back then, the monk mode is the mode of NoFap where you abstain from PMOing but also engage in other dopamine rewiring habits. The idea is that together with your NoFap, you stay off habits that give you cheap dopamine, and at the same time, you do more habits that will give you healthy dopamine. The reasoning behind this version of monk mode is to help you rewire your dopamine pathway as fast as possible in the shortest period of time. Maybe the concept of monk mode in other forms has been around far longer than 11 years, but it was in 2012 that I first knew about this version of it through NoFap. This version of the monk mode is different from the current mainstream version because this new version being peddled by Iman Ghazi and other YouTubers totally ignores the science of cheap dopamine. And when it comes to any version of the monk mode, the concept of cheap dopamine is crucial to making the whole thing work. Cheap dopamine is the type of dopamine that you don't have to work hard to be rewarded with. And most of the time, after consuming cheap dopamine, you feel bad. You feel like you've wasted your time, and no matter how much of this dopamine you consume, it's never satisfying, and it's never enough. The most common sources of cheap dopamine are habits like excessive media usage, excessive alcohol consumption, abusing drugs to get high, eating junk foods excessively, playing video games excessively, excessive gambling, and, of course, the big one, excessive PMOing. So let's say you're the type of guy that can't focus on mentally demanding tasks for long. Let's say you're easily distracted, or you're the type of person that procrastinates a lot on the important things you need to do. Then you might watch an Iman Ganzi video and consider doing the monk mode to achieve the mentally demanding goals you have. And it fits, right? Monk mode looks like a solution to this sort of conundrum, only it isn't. Think about it. If you're the type of guy that gets easily distracted or procrastinate a lot, or you're the type of guy that can't focus for long periods, chances are that you're heavily using cheap dopamine in your life. And as a result, your dopamine pathway is already severely messed up. Trying to use the monk mode to remedy this sort of problem is like trying to solve calculus on your first day of math class. Before Iman Ghazi started raving about the monk mode, he'd been a content creator for more than four years. He started YouTube at the age of 16. So, on some level, he's already wired his brain to do boring and difficult tasks consistently. And because he started so young, I'm willing to bet that he's not that heavily addicted to cheap dopamine. And while he was learning discipline and focus by creating content at 16, you and I were busy training our brains to become addicted to PMOing. Do you see the difference? So he can actually do the monk mode whenever he bloody wants. His brain is already wired that way. And this brings me to the dark side of the monk mode you've never been told before. The Dopamine Pendulum The Taoists believe that living in any form of extreme is bad. 
In other words, too much of anything is definitely not good for you. And when it comes to dopamine, this is 100% true. Think of a pendulum that swings far to one extreme. If no external force acts on this pendulum, by the law of the physical universe, this pendulum will swing to the other extreme in an attempt to balance itself out. If you've been living in one extreme of excessively consuming cheap dopamine for years, deciding to stop abruptly, even for a week, is you swinging the dopamine pendulum to another extreme. And you can be rest assured that the dopamine pendulum will swing back to the other extreme after the week is up, if you make it that far. For instance, if you're already a hardcore social media consumer and you want to stop using it for three weeks in an attempt to complete the monk mode challenge, even if you're successful for the three weeks, you'll find that you'll go back and binge use social media after the three weeks are up. And if you're not careful, you'll end up using social media far more than you were using it before you started the monk mode. This dopamine pendulum swings every time we're trying to stay off cheap dopamine or we're trying to get healthy dopamine. It happens any time we stop eating junk, when we go on a new diet, or when we first stop PMOing. It's the dopamine pendulum that stops us from going back to the gym in the second week after we've pushed ourselves to the extreme in the first week. We experience the fatigue, we experience the burnout, we get bored out of our minds, and our brain instantly craves the former dopamine comfort we've been used to. I'm not saying that it isn't possible to abruptly stop a bad habit, or take on new difficult habits and never look back. I'm saying it's extremely rare. Also, the person that's able to abruptly stop a bad habit is maybe not that addicted to that bad habit in the first place. Or maybe they're presented with a reason to stop that's much more powerful than the force of their dopamine pendulum. Other than that, it's almost impossible to abruptly stop bad habits because rewiring your dopamine pathway is a gradual process. And because a lot of people fall into the trap of their dopamine pendulum when they're trying to do the monk mode challenge, this is why I present the ideal way to go about completing your monk mode challenge. How to do the monk mode properly Step 1. Set your monk mode goal You need to set the goals that you want to use the monk mode to achieve. And not only do you need to set goals, the goals must be very specific. And not only should the goals be specific, but you should also devise the exact action steps you need to be doing daily that will help you achieve the goals. By knowing your exact action steps, you'll be able to figure out exactly how many hours per day you'll be spending on these action steps. For instance, if my goal is to use the monk mode to make more money, this is too broad a goal that lacks any form of direction. If I were to be more specific, I would say that to make more money, I need to get a side hustle that can earn me a specific amount each month. If I were to be more specific, the side hustle would be to learn how to do electrical installations. To become an electrician, what are the things I'll need? Maybe I need to find the nearest electrician and become his apprentice. Or I could search for a course online that'll give me the certificates I need. Another thing I could do is go on YouTube and watch practical videos that show how to do electrical installations, buy the tools I'll need, and start practicing at home for a certain amount of time daily. So, I already have three action steps that I could be doing during my monk mode. Step 2. Figure out your why. Since the monk mode has to do with dopamine discipline, it's very important to be highly motivated to achieve the challenge. Because if you aren't motivated enough, you'll start craving the cheap dopamine you've been used to, and you'll fall off the wagon. We're always at different stages in our lives, and because of this, our priorities will differ from time to time. For instance, if we look at the goal of becoming an electrician mentioned earlier, let's say two different men have this same goal and want to use the monk mode to achieve the goal. One of the men is a family man that already has kids, and his wife is also pregnant. The second guy is fresh out of college and maybe still lives with his parents. The family man needs the side hustle to work yesterday, while the guy fresh out of college can have the feeling that he still has time to find himself and all that other hippie stuff. So, if the two of them went on the monk mode, one of them has more motivation to do it than the other. Motivation is a tricky emotion, as it comes and goes. But to make it last for a while, you can increase your motivation by asking yourself why you want to achieve a specific goal. For the masculine man, if the reason is centered on you, then there's a high chance it won't be enough. You need to keep asking yourself why till you find goals you want to achieve for reasons that are outside of you and greater than you. It might be for your family, it might be for your community, or making the world a better place. This is the type of goal that will give the masculine man a purpose. 
This is the sort of goal that will make him want to wake up in the morning, keep grinding, and keep doing the monk mode even in the dreary times when he doesn't feel like it. But let's assume you're not able to get this kind of motivation that'll take you to the finish line of your monk mode. Then the rest of this video is for you. As I already established, when it comes to the monk mode, there are only two routes to success. Route 1. You've already been living in discipline and you want to set out a specific time to be more disciplined. This is the route of someone like Iman Gadzi. Route 2. You're at a point in your life where you're highly motivated that failure to complete the monk mode is not an option. But what if you don't fall into any of these two categories? What if you're a chronic procrastinator? The reason why you must achieve the goal isn't that compelling, and you're already chronically addicted to several cheap dopamine. If you're this guy, which I think most guys are anyway, then the next step is the most important part of this video for you. Step 3. Set a workable dopamine structure From the example I gave earlier of the guy that wanted to become an electrician, let's say he wants to pursue all three action steps, and he's determined to be spending two hours daily on each action step which means he needs six hours of his day. Assuming that this is a guy that already has a regular job, doesn't have a pressing need to become an electrician right now, is already a master procrastinator and needs six hours daily to focus on his goal using the monk mode, these six hours must come from somewhere. The monk mode approach is to look to get the six hours from the time he already spends on the time wasters in his life. These time wasters are the things that are giving him cheap dopamine, but because of the dopamine pendulum, he can't just abruptly cut out these cheap dopamine habits and get away with it. So, the solution for him is to set a workable dopamine structure by taking out the cheap dopamine sources in stages. Here is how it works. He needs 6 hours daily for his goal. He can first carve out 3 hours in the first 3 to 4 weeks of his monk mode. Let's say he already spends 2 hours surfing Instagram and Twitter in a day. He can cut that 2 hours to 1 hour. If he spends two hours playing video games, he can cut that into one hour, and if he spends two hours daily watching TV, he can cut it down to one. And just like that, he just got the three hours he needed. As I said earlier, predetermining your action steps is quite crucial because it helps you to be highly effective. Once you have the time, you already have the action to take. So, the guy can structure his day in such a way that he first executes his action steps in the first three hours, and after that, use the next three hours to reward himself with cheap dopamine. This approach is systemic and methodical, and it has nothing to do with being motivated. You can do this dopamine structure for three to four weeks. And after four weeks, you can still further cut your cheap dopamine time in half, and gradually phase it out entirely. So much so that it can get to a point where you can be going on monk mode and start blocking out eight hours in your day and cutting out all the distractions in your life for however long you like, just like your favorite YouTubers are doing. However, when you're in monk mode, you need to be highly productive. This is the only way you can make your monk mode worth the effort you're putting into it. There's a video up here where I discuss simple hacks that you can start applying today that'll 10 times your productivity. Watch the video and see how your productivity is taken to a whole new level. If you made it to the end of this video, I appreciate you. If you found this video helpful at all, please destroy that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss it when I drop videos like this one in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.